Give us an idea what a unique challenge tonight's fight was for you. Uh, he's high. Um, I thought it would have been easier than I thought. He's low center of gravity, very hard to deal with. I couldn't really get underhooks very well. I just had to frame in his face and throw, that's all I could do. When he had me against the cage, usually I'm used to getting underhook and spinning him, but it was just so low, so low center of gravity, so hard to deal with. The wrestling, I mean, was it as good as you thought it would be? Did you think you showed, you know, that you were maybe better than people think you are? Of course, I want to show people like, people think I'm crazy going for a takedown. I want to show you that I can do it as well. You know, I'm not just a walkover, I can wrestle. I might not show it. I mean, one thing I, I beat him with was experience. Definitely show tonight and heart. You feel like sometimes you don't get the credit you deserve. I mean, there's some bigger names out of your part of the world. At least maybe fighting here in the States might help that a little bit. But you feel like sometimes you're, you're not getting the credit you deserve? Definitely not getting the credit I deserve. And uh, it might continue that way. But it is what it is. I'm the dentist. So I don't give a damn. Uh, I'll come, I'll, I'll fight in hostile territory and, and prove to people that I'm one of the best in the world. You know, so. I love you Americans, but the booing's got to stop. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually agree with that. Yeah, uh, please. We, uh, we, we couldn't see the, we had the volume off back here, so we couldn't see. It looked like you were pretty fired up at the end of the fight, in, in the post fight with Anik. What, what was the message there? The message was like, don't, don't, where I'm from, you can't call someone out and then get their mum involved. Like, I'm from East London, them things don't happen. You know, so you will get your head taken off, you know, I'll cut him open. I said I'm going to do that. He said he's going to, traded me first round, he didn't do that. So I was just fired up about it, you know, like don't say them things, you know what I mean? Don't 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 call me out, get mums involved, miss weight, I think you can come and beat me. Just don't do it. Don't don't have don't don't run like that back in London. So that's what I was talking to Anik about. What was your reaction to him missing weight? I was I was recovering. So at the time it was a bit emotional. It was like I'm dying on the floor, you know? I'm sacrificing, making big sacrifices. I'm going through hell to make the weight to fight you. Come over to your country. They keep sending me over to America. I love the place, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> keep sending me here, yeah? The least you can do is make weight. You know, how do you think it feels for me? You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it was it was emotional, but as I got more food in my system, I didn't care. I yeah. Oh, I had that as well. Should have been more. I feel like he overlooked you in this fight with the weight cut miss and everything else uh, heading into the fight. Do I feel? That, that he overlooked you in this fight. He yeah. did overlook me, you know? He said, yeah, in one interview, no, he said on Twitter, I think it was, that I'm going to trade with you first round, yeah, to show me that he can strike and then it will put me in deep waters. Who was in deep waters tonight? It, I, I was, I'm not going to lie to you, I was, I was in a bit of deep waters tonight, but I've been there. You might have been in deep waters in, in training. Training and the last stage is two different things. You haven't been in deep waters. I'm, I'm hoping that he's learned from tonight because... I've been in deep waters and I've learned from it and I hope that he does as well. And kind of on that same note, were you surprised you weren't part of Media Day this week? You're a pretty good interview and I was kind of surprised you weren't uh, you know, getting some shine there. Uh, I didn't mind it. I want a break. <laughs> got, got some extra rest. I guess. Yeah, I got a rest. Man. Every time I come out, it's like, Darren, Wednesday, do this. Thursday, do that. You know, like, I had a good week today. I haven't had a good week this week, so I'm happy to have a break. Next time, I'll see how it goes. Interviews. Yeah. Do, you, do you think he needs to stay at 185? Like, with his mind, obviously, he's going to take you just gotta stop being lazy. You know, you gotta you gotta make weight. You gotta hang on, I ain't gonna bore you guys and, and play a violin, you know, but I go through sacrifice and I make the weight. I never miss weight before in my life. I don't see there's no point in going up. Like I'm not I'm not I'm not the best yet, but you're gonna go up to light heavy, you're gonna get you're gonna get tread on. So I've been told that he looks like he's a welterweight, but if he looks like he's a welterweight, how's he not making middleweight? You know, but again, like, I'm not gonna talk crap about him because that's not who I am. You know, I'm a humble guy, I've always have been. You know, I'm just, someone's oh had to go. Like, and my, my O already went, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're a humble guy, you don't like to do this and stuff, but you know, try to coach something out there, right? Is there someone in particular you want to fight next? Uh, anyone, I just want to fight. I want to fight in London. Okay. I want to fight, I want to show my people that I'm not the same down as I, I was. The heart is still there, but I've improved as a fighter. So I love to fight in London and uh, fight whoever in London, do you know what I mean? So. Sounds like they usually go back there around March time, would that work yeah. yeah, I mean, adrenaline's going for my body right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here and say to you, yeah, 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 November, this and that, yeah. But when the, when the sores start kicking in, I don't know. I have to speak to my coaches first. Can't be December, because I got um, going away with my missus family uh, for Christmas and she'll kill me. So it can't be December. So depending on how, how quick I recover, November, if not, then yeah, next year.
We've yeah. talked about your evolution over the last couple of years. You've obviously, since the lowest fight, you continue to grow and grow, and your game continues to evolve. What would what would the fighter from tonight tell your your former self, the guy who just got in the UFC? What, what message would you give to that guy, and maybe even to Duran Wynn moving forward? I don't, I don't know about Duran Wynn, but the message to the guy you're talking about is keep going. Like I came from a Taekwondo background, and the uh, one word. That I always use up to this day is perseverance, you know, never give up. There's, there's many times I feel like giving up and I can't. I've got my family around me, my coaches around me, you know, UFC supporting me as well. Like my management, everyone's supporting me. I can't give up. That's the message I'll say to the old Darren, you know, and that's why I'm here today. I'm not giving up. I've got a lot of work to do. I'm still learning. It's like my coaches say, like, they're not asking for a lot. Just, just improve a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, baby steps, you know, and I feel like that's what I'm doing now. And I hope I'm showing the world that I'm doing that. Darren, the fight was a split decision. What was going through your mind when they, you know, when they announced that one of the judges gave to him? How worried were you when it was 1-1? I was just like, not again. Please, not again. Nah, split decision. I've got work to do. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, we, our names are very similar. So I'm putting my hands up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I heard <laughs> Darren. So I thought, oh, man. And then, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah? I just thought about it now because my head's coming back to normal. I thought, I, I didn't hear Stuart. I just heard Darren, so I went Darren, Darren. I was like, okay, but I see my coach is going like that. So I was like, okay, yeah, I won, I won, I won, yeah. That's honest truth, like, I didn't really, my name, my first name very similar. So I just thought, uh, when he said uh, one round to him, then one round to me, and then Darren, I was like, oh, mate. Right. But then I see the coaches jumping up, so I was in shock. You might even see it on camera, they jumped before me. Yeah, so. He, uh, he got a lot of takedowns, got a lot of time on top, didn't do much with it. You know, why you got the decision, you landed the better shots. Um, I mean, yeah. You said yeah. you weren't sure if you won. How yeah. old you were that, you know, even though you landed the better shots, that just holding you down was you getting the victory. You know what? Yeah, when I came into this game, yeah, I was told certain rules like, on your back, you're losing. Against the cage, you're losing. You've got to get up. You've got to get off the cage. And then as I involved as a fighter, my jiu-jitsu coach told me, you know what, if it takes you down, you've got to feel back. Relax there. You know, some people might watch that fight and think, oh yeah, they got Darren again, he's stalling. But I wasn't really stalling. I was listening to his breathing, you know? Come from my meditation. I heard him breathing heavy. And then you see me get off the cage and he was, he was effed, he was finished. You know, I've, I've been proving a fight and my coach said to me, if it goes to the floor, it's okay. That's the reason why Shabazzian beat me because he took me down, I get up. He took me down, I get up. And my coach, Michael Russell said, just relax there. Do some jujitsu, you're not, you're not gonna, you know I mean? You got three rounds to go. I threw up a triangle. I was just thinking, yes, Mike. Like my coach, like, I oh, know you're going to see this. Yes, Mike. And I went for an arm bar and he slipped out. If it was dry, I would have got that. But it was nice to play off the back. I'm not going to lie. Um, he threw some good grinding pan. But I've got a tough gin. Uh, East London, that's how we roll. I keep I said it before and I'll say it again. I've got a tough gin. He threw some good grinding pan shots. But he couldn't take my grinding pan shots. I think I've got some elbows. I can't remember on the floor. But he couldn't take them, you know? So. After, after last night, I think you and Oscar were kind of speaking out. They walked out to Skepta. Uh, we couldn't hear your song this, uh, this time back there. What you Oh, a friend of mine called Bonkers. Uh, he's another um, UK artist. And uh, I like this tune because it started off with uh, Khabib. I don't, know if it paid, I don't know how they done it. Did you hear in Arena? No, I didn't. Yeah, they cut it on purpose. See, they don't like English people. See what I mean? <laughs> they're very, very, yeah, they're very, very clever because at the beginning, it's like, same location, same location, Moscow, da 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 And I put that tune on purpose. I know he's at AKA in the chamber of Khabib. But they knew that, okay, oh, yeah, they knew he's at AKA. Search it, bonkers, Khabib style. It's there on YouTube. You can't, they can cut it off, but you can't hide from YouTube. It's there on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, Khabib style. And it's like, send location, send location. And I've done it on purpose because he's from AKA, do you know what I mean? And they cut it off because what? He's so got. You found out they cut it off when you were walking out? Yeah, kind of. I'm walking backwards now. And the woman's like, one, two, three, four. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm, and I'm like, it's just gone straight into it. Like, they cut it off. Like, what's happening? So. Yeah, very clever. Well done, guys. Well done, well done. <laughs> I'll find another tune, don't worry. You landed some really heavy shots. Are you surprised you didn't put them out? Yeah, very surprised. I mean, I heard, I heard he's got a tough head, you know? He's got a tough head. Um, I didn't put him away. I haven't got a knockout for a long time. I mean, I've got to give him credit, man. I'm not going to sit here and trash talk him. He, he's tough. He is tough. Everyone, like my coach Paul said, everyone in the UFC is tough. I'm a change fighter and I'm not trying to look for the knockout. You look for the knockout, you're not going to get it. Just have fun, pick your shots. And that's what I did. Um, he thinks he's got a tough chin, but he didn't rock me, I rocked him. So I, I'm glad he's going to watch that and say, yeah, you know what, I was wrong. Darren can strike. 
I put him with a clean right and uh, he started grappling. And uh, like my coach uh, Shane says, it's a fact that every time I hit someone, they go back to what they know. And he started grappling. Um, yeah, great fight. I want to watch it back a couple of days.